Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. So now I'm just going to answer some solar facts, frequently asked questions, questions I get asked all the time. And so you will know, uh, just I'll have those answers. And I'll probably have a solar facts, and this is just going to be for the basic solar system. And I'll have a solar facts on, uh, on solar panels, I'll have a solar facts on charge controllers and all the solar facts on batteries and probably one on inverters. And then we'll, we'll deal with each one at a time and we'll build and make it easy. First we'll talk about this, then we'll talk about this, then we'll talk about this. That's how you climb a, a steep place, step by step by step by step. And then at the end you get on the top and you think, hey, I got this. And that's the goal. You'll be able to say one day, hey, I got this. Will solar work for me? And the answer is just simply yes. I mean, it's solar is amazing. Free power for the rest of your life. You spend a couple hundred, three, four, five hundred dollars, free power for the rest of your life. You never pay again. Now, maybe something will break down the road. You never know. It's unlikely, and it'll be many years down the road. Solar panels are virtually good forever. Charge controllers will eventually break, probably, but still a very long time. Uh, yes, solar will work for you. The one time you might think, man, this really won't work for me. You live in Seattle all winter and you never see the sun. Man, it may not work for you. Uh, in, in Alaska in the winter, solar won't work for you. I mean, you have four or five hours of daylight a day. Well, solar is not, you're, you just have a huge panel set array to get any sun out of four or five hours in a cloudy day. And believe me, I know in Alaska, there are a whole lot of cloudy days in the winter. It just probably wouldn't work. Uh, in the summer, on the other hand, oh my goodness, it's it's 18 hours of good sun a day. I mean, it would just, you couldn't, you couldn't, I couldn't burn all the power that I would have in Alaska with my system in the summer, and I couldn't possibly get enough in the winter. And so, yes, there are going to be a few rare situations where solar probably would not be work for, work for you, and it wouldn't be a good decision. Uh, but for nearly everyone else, yes, solar will work for you. Can I do everything with solar that I do at home? And theoretically, the answer is yes. So, for example, can you cook with solar? Can you use an electric? Uh, can you use an electric heater? Can you run your air conditioner? Can you use a microwave? And theoretically, the answer is yes. If you have enough solar, you can do anything you want. But practically, the answer is no. You cannot think of solar as a, an, an apartment. Solar on your van, your your car, your RV as an apartment on wheels. No, it won't work. Uh, I have 400 watts of solar on my van, and I do run a microwave, but I couldn't even think about uh, heat, uh, an electric heater. I couldn't even think about an air conditioner, and I have to be kind of careful with the, air, with, the, uh, with the microwave, but it will do a microwave, and that's about it. So the answer is no. You must think differently. Now, if you have an RV with, with plenty of room on the roof, and you have 2,000 watts of solar, then yes, you, you can run an, an, an air conditioner. You could run an electric heater. That would be possible. But that's going to apply to very few of us. The answer is yes, it's possible. For most of us, no. It's just completely impractical. Don't think that way. You, when you start thinking of solar, it's you can be comfortable and happy, but you can't have any luxuries. That's the bottom line. How much solar do I need? So let me break it down into like a 100 watt system, a 200 watt system, a 400 watt system, and an 800 watt system. So with a 100 watt system, you've got just the basics. You can run uh, lights, you can run your laptop, and your you can run a fan. You may can run a, a, a 12 volt compressor fridge, it's possible. Uh, and that's about it. I mean, you're just the basics. Your life can be okay and good and comfortable, but no extras of any kind. And then at 200 watts, it becomes much, the basics become much more secure and comfortable. So in other words, yes, you can do everything on the basics. You can run a light, you can run fans, you can run two fans, you can run, you can certainly run a, um, a, a 12 volt compressor fridge on 200 watts easily you got a pretty good life. And my recommendation for most people is 200 watts. You have 200 watts, you're going to get along just fine. But no extras. You're not going to run a microwave. You're not going to run even consider an AC. You're not going to consider cooking. Now, 
now if you step up then to 400 watts and then you've included a microwave you've got power to burn in the summer you can't burn all the power I, I can't use all the power I have in the summer I never have to think in the summer am I gonna have enough power but here's the big thing uh, you want to you want to size your solar system for the worst day of the year in other words at hundred watts come winter time a storm in the winter when the, in the winter the, the uh, sun is low on the horizon and the days are short and then you get two or three or four days of rain you're out of power you will run out of power periodically at 100 watts in the winter now 200 watts makes you much more secure you are very likely to get through the winter without a problem and two or three or four days of rain you can get through it because you're getting still getting some power even on a cloudy day and uh, you've kept your you have more batteries with you probably have at least two batteries you have two golf carts let's say so that gives you more storage through two or three or four days of of rain and clouds at 400 watts you get through the winter no problem you always have enough you're never going to be thinking to yourself oh man i don't have enough power now i'm talking about in the arizona desert in in portland 400 watts won't be enough completely different story so you have to look at where you are if you are a snowbird and you go to the arizona desert 400 watts is plenty all winter i've never run out of power with 400 watts of solar in the winter uh, i've never run out of power ever if i'm reasonable if i know a storm's coming i'm not going to have any power for four days I won't use the microwave because I won't have any extra. That will take too much out and I'll run out. So I will kind of conserve, I will use less, and I'll get by just fine. My batteries will never go too low. At uh, from 400 to 800, then you are just, then you have extra. Then you can start thinking about running an air conditioning for short periods of time. You can run, you can start thinking about a, uh, an induction stove. An induction stove is the magnetic kind. Well, you never use propane, you just use electric. You can, at, at 500 to 750 watts, you can think about an induction stove. You can think about running, because you'll have four golf cart batteries, and those batteries will maybe get you through using your crock pot and your rice cooker. So you are doing a lot more, and maybe you can run an AC. I think you actually can run an AC on, on 750, 800 watts of solar. Uh, you can't do it a lot, you can't do it overnight, but you can run an AC briefly during the day when you have plenty of sun so how much should you get well that's what if you want those are the numbers you should aim for you want just the basics uh, get 100 watts plenty and, and probably going to be satisfied 200 watts you'll get through the worst days of the winter 400 watts luxuries I mean real extravagances uh, 800 watts basically here's my recommendation for everyone and how much solar you should get spend all you can afford uh, and, and then people say to me, Bob, that's kind of crazy. Won't you buy too much and regret it? I've never known a single person who said to me, I bought too much solar. Everyone is grateful for all the solar they can get, and they find a way to use it. In the summer, they can't possibly use it all, and in the winter, they never run out. And believe me, knowing that a storm is coming and I'm not going to run out is a good, good, good thing. Can I run my, can I charge my batteries off of solar and off of the engine, off the alternator and the starting battery? Yes, absolutely. That's a great idea. I recommend everyone do that. The two work together extremely well. And then another question is, can I run a generator at the same time as I run my solar and at the same time that I'm charging off of my engine? Yes. The three of them work together extremely well. Each has its own voltage regulator and senses the other and cuts back so it won't overvolt and damage the batteries. So yes, uh, especially solar and charging off the engine. Really good idea. Everyone should have both. What should I buy? What kind should I buy? Should, uh, where will I get my solar power system? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, and probably the easiest and what I recommend for most of you is to buy a kit. Uh, a Renogy kit off of Amazon or directly from Renogy, I think that is ideal. And that way you don't have the learning curve, you don't have to learn so much. You say, I've got $500 to spend and for $500 I can buy a 400 watt Renogy kit, buy that. Well, 
maybe you want to buy the 200 watt because you will have to buy a few things that are included. For one thing, they don't include fuses, and I've never really understood that. They should include a couple of inline fuses just to be safe, and then you put the size in that you want. Uh, so you may have to buy a few extra things that aren't in the kit, so be prepared for that. Have a little extra cushion. But whatever money you have, buy a kit, a Renogy kit of that size, and that's personally what I recommend. Uh, you can just buy solar panels, either the flexible or hard, and lay them out and then, and then string them together with MC4 connectors. Uh, but you have to learn to more. You're going to have to learn what to buy and then buy it and then assemble it. With a Renogy kit, you don't have to learn hardly anything. All you have to do is follow their instructions. They have videos, they have uh, written instructions. You follow the instructions and you can, you can put together a Renogy kit and install it yourself. I really believe that. Uh, so for most of you, just buy a kit. Uh, and for some of you then, another choice and possibly a better choice is to assemble your own but it has, and then buy all the individual parts and pieces and put them together. Why would you do that? Well, it's possible you could save some money. You could buy big panels, and the big panels are cheaper than the 100-watt panels. But each individual component will be better. Now, when I say each individual component will be better, that implies that the Renogy components are bad, and that's not true at all. The Renogy components are perfectly good. You'll be perfectly happy with them. But I can buy better and more expensive by buying them myself and assembling them in my own kit. So, and there, But the big problem with that is there's a very steep learning curve. You have to understand everything to know this is better than this. I want an MPPT and not a PWM because and you have to know that and you have to learn that. So if you don't want to learn all that stuff and you want to learn the minimum, buy a kit and install it. Have a friend help you install it. Watch the videos and install it. You really can do it. So then the question is, where should I buy it? Uh, kits buy directly from Amazon or directly from the Renogy, um, Renogy site. Same thing with uh, Windy Nation. Windy Nation has a good kit, probably every bit as good as Renogy. I recommend Renogy because I know it. I know a lot of people with Renogy and they've had very, very good luck with them. And when they had a problem, Renogy took care of it and fixed it. So I, re I recommend Renogy only because I know it. Uh, that isn't to say the others aren't good. Windy Nation is one, Echo Solar is another one. There are, there are several of them. And I'm sure they're all good. And, and maybe you just want to buy on price. But buy directly from their website or directly from Amazon. If you're going to buy, uh, assemble your pieces, well, you just want to study the whole internet and find the best prices for this is over here and this is over here and I'll buy that over there because this is the best for this best price. What will it cost? Uh, you can buy a 200 watt kit, I think now for 250. Maybe less than 200, 200 to 250. I have I don't keep up with prices and they change all the time. And then you basically add another 100, 120 dollars for each panel. You you add something like that. So I think you can buy a 400 watt system kit for like 600. Um, if I were going to buy my own panels, I would buy a 250 watt panel for about 250 dollars, a dollar a watt. That's what you want to pay. A solar controller, a good one, uh, MPPT would be about 300, so that's 250 and 300. A pair of uh, Trojans would be another uh, 125, 125, 250, so that's 500, 6, 7, 800. Figure $100 for all the different parts and pieces to put them together, $900. So a high quality, assemble it yourself solar kit would be $950, including the batteries. Now, when I give you the kit prices, I didn't include the batteries. So if you buy a 100-watt kit, a Renogy 100-watt kit for $200 and a $100 battery, then you have $300 invested. Maybe you'll spend another $50 for fuses and an extra wire here that they don't include. So I hope that gives you an idea. We're going to have a long series, and we're going to break things down and make them really simple. Uh, and I just tried to answer some of your most basic questions today. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, you got something out of it. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and don't settle for a mediocre life. Live your best life, whatever it takes for you to accomplish that. And uh, until next time, we'll talk to you later.